hello all welcome to tech capture myself vishal bulbule and in this session we are going to see about a cloud spanner so first of all uh, we'll see what are the relational databases provided by a gcp so there are two relational databases service uh, in a gcp so first is a cloud sql so we already learned about a cloud sql how to create a cloud sql instance and what are the different features of a cloud sql so if you want to see that video i will paste the link uh, in the description now in this session we are going to focus more on a cloud spanner so just in case if you have any confusion when to use a cloud sql and when to use a cloud spanner so here are some differences and a criteria for using a cloud spanner so suppose if you have a data which is a more than 30 tb then you should go for a cloud spanner because cloud spanner is also a relational database for a large scale application and if you have a very huge amount of relational data then you can go for a cloud spanner so cloud spanner also provide a better scalability than your cloud sql but if you want to migrate your code from any of your traditional databases like mysql or a sql server then cloud spanner is not a straightforward choice because the lift and shift option is not available in a cloud spanner one more thing in a difference in cloud sql and cloud spanner so as a cloud sql you will use a mysql or a sql server in google managed environment so even if you are using your code of mysql you can go back to your traditional database uh, from cloud sql or and vice versa but once you bring your code to cloud spanner you cannot get back to mysql or any other related databases so that is one limitation you can say and also a uh, cloud sql is a uh, not we can say a global service because it's available in in single zone and it will have a failover replica in another zone so if you have a cloud sql instance in zone a us any of the zone a and it went down you can fail over it to zone b but suppose a complete region goes down then your uh, cloud sql instance uh, will be unavailable but in case of a cloud spinner we can consider it as a global resources how it can be available for a multi-regional and global we'll see once we start with a demo so i'll just uh, go to the basic introduction of a cloud spanner now This is a typical uh, definition of a cloud spanner. So cloud spanner is a fully managed mission critical relational database service that offer transactional consistency at a global scale, automatic synchronous replication for high availability. Now we'll see the meaning of each and every uh, feature mentioned in this uh, definition. So I'll just go to a cloud spanner architecture. So this is a cloud spanner architecture so we'll just go back to the definition so what it says it's a fully managed means all the storage network and the nodes everything is managed all the compute power is managed by google you don't need to worry about the compute power it is using you just need to specify what type of a compute like uh, how much compute power you need and you can start with any of the compute engine and then it will scale based on the need so here whenever you create a cloud spanner instance so it will replicate your database in three zones so it if you select us central one as a region for your cloud spanner database it will replicate your database in three zone and this replication is available for both read and write so whenever you update anything in a database suppose you it is updating in database one in zone two or like zone b then it's synchronously updating in both the region so it is a real time you could say it's almost a real time and a synchronous so whatever you are updating in any zone it will get replicated in all the other two zones so this is a of a transactional consistency means whatever the transaction you are performing in this database it will consistent in all the three region inside your all the three zone inside your region and this global scale means it's updating in all the zone 
and automatic it's you don't need to worry about this replication and synchronous consistency and this is synchronous replication for a high availability so as it is available in you could see it is available in three zone inside the region we can create the cloud spanner instance for multi-region as well we'll see once we start with a demo so i'll go to my google cloud console now and we'll start with a demo now in this demo uh, we'll create a cloud spanner instance we'll create a database and we'll try to insert some dummy data in our cloud spanner instance so let me scroll down and choose cloud spanner so here it is a cloud spanner in databases okay here i will click on a uh, create instance so here you can give a instance name i'll just close this and just keep an eye on this summary tab so whatever we are choosing it will calculate the cost based on the parameters we are choosing to start our instance so i'm just give as my spanner demo instance and configuration so i am just giving it for a regional for now so suppose i choose a regional and i'll choose us central one now you could see these costs are calculated because costs are based on the region first it based on region and it vary according to the region now if i choose this regional now you could see the three read and write replicas in three separate zone within a region us central one so whenever i am choosing us central one it is creating three replicas so it's not only a read replica like a cloud sql it will create a read write replica in three separate zone within a us central one now suppose if i choose a multi-regional and i will choose a region as a us so here are north america six all these given so now if i choose a multi-regional here you could see two read write replica in us central one two read write replica in us east one one read only replica in us west one one read only replica in los angeles and one waitress replica in us central two so it is almost creating everything in your us multi-region so for this i'm just going as a regional choice and i will choose us central one now here you could see the compute cost so your cloud spanner instance will use a compute as well as a storage so here you could see the compute cost is 0.90 us dollar per hour if i change the region the cost will vary suppose i choose a south america it is now increase so i am choosing us central one because i feel it is uh, cheaper than other region okay now here you could either you select your processing unit or you can choose your nodes so suppose if i am choosing a processor unit 1000 this storage capacity depends upon this processing unit so suppose if i use 100 units so it's increased to 10 gb but if here it is a minimum 100 so if i try to give as a 10 it will give error that it should be minimum 100 and up to 1000 in scale of 100 so i can give it 1000 so i'm giving it uh, for now i'm just giving it a lowest 100 because i don't need much for this demo or if i choose a uh, nodes it will default take 100 processing unit that is 40 b so one node is equal to you could consider as a thousand processing unit so i'll go by processing units instead of node and i will choose 100 which is a lowest for my demo and i'll create my cloud spanner instance so it is a bit faster while creating the instance than cloud sql and you could see 
this cloud spanner instance is created now now this is overview page of my cloud spanner instance here i can create my database and table so let me just explore you through the options currently so we have this overview option here we could see the overview of my cloud spanner instance this is the name spanner demo this is the id and this is a region i have chosen and then here i can edit the instance delete the instance currently the database storage is zero because we didn't create any database or a table in import export we have option to import the data or export the data in backup and restore we can take a backup of our database and we can restore our existing database as well so first let me go to the overview page and i'll create a sample database so once i click on create database i can give the name i'll just give the name as a demo so if i give the demo you could see it's only contain a lowercase it giving me error so let me choose a lowercase demo db and so this is uh, as we seen in our uh, this document here cloud spanner supports two sql dialects that is a standard sql and postgres sql so here we are getting these two option i will go with google standard sql and i'll click on create so it will create a demo db database for me and will directly land into a overview page for our demo db database so it is a creating a database for me and here database is created now okay so now we are inside the demo db database now here you could see earlier we were in instance page then we we'll went to uh, our spanner demo instance overview now we have this uh, sql demo database and if we go to demo db okay now if we go here we don't have the query option or few of the option but once we go inside our database we will have this query change team and other options so we have this database we'll create a table here so once we click on a create table it will give us a sample syntax to create a table so i will just create a table called employee I'll just call the table called EMP and I'll just give the first column as my employee ID EMP ID and the type I'll just give in 64 and I will give it as a not null because I am designing that it should not contain null value then I'll just give employee name and i will give data type as a string and i will just give character length okay so i will just use these two columns only and here the primary key i will choose as emp id okay and i will create my database with these two column I will create a table, not a database, sorry. Okay, now here you could see EMP table is created. Let me go inside the table and check the schema. So it should show us a field. Okay, it is having employee ID as a primary key. Here you could see this key symbol, it means it is a primary key nullable no it should not be nullable and then the employee name it is a string then we'll see what are the data we have so currently we don't have any data inside our table
okay now here in data we don't have any data here we have option to insert the data let's insert few columns inside this table and we already got the syntax so i will just give the value here i will just give the value employee id as a one and employee name i will give as my name okay and i'll run this query okay because it is a string i need to give in a single quote i miss that i'll give it in a single quote and i'll run it okay one row inserted now let me see the data again it's a uh, loading okay now you could see it's inserted one record employee ID is one and employee name is Vishal so in this way we have created a demo DB database inside the database we have created employee table and in table we have inserted a data so let's go to backup and restore so here we have this option to backup so we can create a backup from here so whenever we create a backup it will ask us to give a backup name i can give a demo underscore bkp and it will give us an option when this backup should expire we can either mention this predefined category or we can select a custom date also and we can click on a create a backup i am not going to create any backup for now as it will take a uh, time so only this option i wanted to explore for this a uh, demo so in this demo we see we already saw how we created a cloud spanner instance cloud spanner database and how we inserted the data inside a cloud spanner table so thank you for watching the video let us me know if you have any question regarding a cloud spanner i'll try to answer your queries thank you for watching the video